Good morning all, I've got some more posts, so it's another post bag. So what's this gift, I wonder? Let's find out. This has been sitting around for days. I've been dying to know what's in here. A module. It's another Ming He power supply. It's uh, a buck power supply, I'm pretty sure. Or is it boost? Oh, actually, it might be boost. But it's got uh, a heat sink and a fan. Mmm, 160 volt capacitors on the output, so it's definitely a boost converter. I'm pretty sure I remember reading that this thing can put out up to 120 volts DC. So on the heatsink there is a big MOSFET. And this other device here, I really should know, even though it's a three terminal device, that it's a diode. And in fact, if you flip it over, you can see it's a diode because the two outer pins are connected together and the inner pin uh, goes off somewhere else. So it's either two diodes pointing in or two diodes pointing out. A big chunky inductor behind the heatsink here, 20 amp fuse on the input. There's a little link there. Oh, it actually says R12. So that's a very low value resistor. There's another uh, low value resistor here. I assume it's low value. It's marked Dale. So on eBay, this is the DC DC 900 watt, 15 amps, uh, 8 to 60 volts on the input to 10 to 120 volts on the output. Some voltages there. Uh, CCCV boost power supply module. This was $24.38 uh, free shipping and this came from Wish You Happy. Now let's get some more spec. Uh, input current is 0 to 15 amps. It's got a 20 amp fuse. Uh, output voltage 10 to 120. Output current 0 to 15 amps. Conversion efficiency, that's not very efficient is it? 85%. 150 kilohertz, short circuit protection, etc, etc. So this is the BST 900, uh, notionally 900 watts, by Ming He, the same manufacturer that produced the BST 400, which is another boost converter. Now this one has that very annoying slow voltage rise uh, time, which uh, takes so it takes ages to get up to the higher voltage. Let's see if this one has the same problem. I'll plug it in and stick a LED on it or something like that. Right, I've kind of bodge wired uh, these two 100 watt LEDs which are in parallel. I'm only gonna put uh, an amp through them. I don't want them to go fiercely bright, uh, but I'm going to put uh, up to 40 volts out. I've got uh, 13 and a half volts coming in. Let's see how quickly this thing rises up. Switch on. Oh, immediately. That's good. The fans come on. And uh, we're driving at 27.55 volts in constant uh, current mode, of course. Let's take the current up a bit. The current it's drawing is 0.99 amps. Let's take that up to 2 amps. A little bit of inductor squeal now. And I'm not quite sure how hard I can drive this front end because it's only on a 2.1 mil connector. Let's go up to two and a half amps on the output. Well, the inductor squeal is not nasty, but it is a very irritating high pitch. I'm sure you can hear that. I can hear it and my hearing's not that brilliant at high frequencies. But yeah, that works off. Oh. The fans come on really fast now. How interesting. Let's go on again. So yeah, this one, the output ramps up instantly. So it's much better for LEDs. So I'm already liking the BST900 quite a bit more than the BST400 because of this thing's annoying slow voltage rise time. I mean, maybe this was designed for a specific application. I don't know. But this seems uh, a bit more general purpose. Now, once again, this thing has uh, TX and RX pins on this four-way connector. So when I've got a bit more time, 
I'll check whether there's any uh, cereal coming out of, well, TX, I suppose it would be. Depends which way this has been implemented, but I'll check if there's any data coming out and whether it accepts commands going in, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, big one now, and I'm going to give the game away. On the front it says Walkie Talkie Toy. Let's cut that off. Well, I've no doubt that these are genuinely Walkie Talkie Toys, but that display is just a sticker. That's not a real liquid crystal display, despite what the eBay listing says. Look, you can even see the dot pattern of the printing process. What's that dot pattern called? I can't remember now. I should know because I was in the printing industry for 20 years. Hmm, this is interesting. These have already been cut and then sellotaped back together. So someone's already been inside here and decided perhaps that they don't like these walkie-talkies. They also appear to be uh, Banggood, SKU. 337406, that I think is a Banggood SKU. Let's have a look on eBay. So on eBay, these are two pieces mini walkie talkie kids electronic toy portable two way radio set. This is a bit sad, isn't it? Mommy, where are you? Dad, can you hear me? Well, sorry kids, your parents have left you. And uh, further down it says, this is a simple and practical children's walkie-talkie. And then it goes on to say it's got channel scan, channel lock, automatic squelch, automatic battery save, selective channels, LCD backlit, auto channel scan, page tone alert, low battery alert. Hasn't got any of that because it hasn't even got an LCD. Uh, frequency 409 to 410 megahertz. I'm going to have to see if they work, aren't I? Uh, so we've got an antenna there, uh, that I don't think does anything, it just rotates. Microphone probably doubling as a speaker, none of these buttons do anything. On off switch and a push to talk, so I'm hoping they will actually transmit and receive. I'll put some batteries in. Right, they're not AAAs, they're double A's, and that's a positive. I much prefer double A's to triple A's, so let's... Put the cover on, switch on. Mmm. We've got some static. Right, I better get the other one powered up. Okay, here we go. Switch them both on. Yep, feedback. Hello, hello. Oh, they're actually quite good. That's quite good sound. Hello, hello. Try it the other way around. Hello, hello, hello. Mummy, where are you? Well, actually, I think these are quite good for five dollars seventy-four free shipping, and they came from Sassy River, two thousand and nine. Now the question is: Are these walkie-talkies? Let's turn that off. Um, for around six dollars, going to be any better than these walkie-talkies, which were actually? Free on the front cover of a magazine, CBeebies magazine, which I saw the other day and couldn't resist, for £3.25, free walkie-talkies. I'm going to have to do a video with a walkie-talkie showdown. I'm going to have to work quickly because the sun's coming around. Okay, this one is RF cable assembly. It's actually not an RF cable. Let's see what it is. It's a solar cable. It's a one meter MC3. Is that MC3? Yeah, I guess it must be. MC3 extension lead, which I'm going to cut in half. Hmm, this says Dongguan Nistar Transmitting Technology Company Inc. Solar cable. Uh, PV1, four millimeters square, four square millimeters, 40 degrees, oh, minus 40 degrees C, two plus, what's that, 90 degrees C. So there's more, 0.6 stroke one kilovolt, 
TUV and some other stuff. I'm just wondering whether I should cut it in half right now. Now, is that the exact halfway point? It's got to be really, this is all looking quite symmetrical. Let's go for it. See if this thing will cut this in half. Yep, excellent. So this is a three foot PV solar cable extension, MC3 type connectors, male and female, DIY, TUV, four millimeters squared. Uh, this was always oh, quite expensive, $11.28 free shipping, RF bat. Uh, well, what I was about to say is that I'm gonna use the uh, this cable to connect this big solar panel that Jonty gave me, 240 watts, to uh, Dacian's SBMS. But there seems to be a bit of an issue here. And that is that the MC3s on the solar panel have a larger diameter, well, hole on the ones at the top there. So the solar panel MC3 is on the top right. The connector MC3, the piece of wire I just cut in half MC3 is on the top left. It's a totally different diameter. And the same at the bottom. The solar panel one looks like it's four millimeters. The other one's more like two and a half, something like that. Are there different types of MC3 connector? That's quite annoying. I mean, that's how it's supposed to connect, but that clearly doesn't connect at all. It's all wobbling around. It doesn't push fully home. And the connectors are completely different diameter. That's really weird. I'm gonna to have to uh, do some research on MC3s. So the thing I just bought has HXX on it. And the one on the solar panel has C4 uh, embossed on it. So I'm mystified. To be honest, I think probably a better bet would be to cut these, whatever these are, off the solar panel and crimp on some MC4s. Because uh, Jonty did also give me some MC4 tails, there's some more in these bags, and uh, also a crimp tool uh, for putting on the MC4. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go. I'm going to go MC4. MC3 looks like it's a bit of a minefield. Well, a quick Google image search. Um, MC3 connectors do appear to be the same as this that's on the lead I just bought. So I've no idea what's on the actual solar panel. But yeah, I'm going to cut them off. <laughs> because, uh, well, one doesn't fit into the other. Okay, moving swiftly on. Something else solar themed, I think. It's a solar charge controller. Now this has come in uh, directly from Banggood. So let's take a look inside the box. And uh, I have to admit, I was attracted to this by the rather nice display. You can't see it at the moment, but I'll put some power on here and we'll have a look at the display. It's rather nice. There are a couple of um, wire tailed uh, connectors here for the 12 volt DC out. There's also two USB outputs. Hmm. Right, let's plug 12 volts into this and see what we get. Oh yes, that's quite nice, isn't it? Battery voltage 13.6. Yes, that correlates with uh, what my display is saying. Output current is off. Can I switch it on? Yeah, output current is now zero because I've got nothing connected to the output. Switch it back off again. Uh, temperature is 20 degrees C. That's saying that it's the middle of the night, is it? Better read the manual. That's interesting. The phenomenon is when there is adequate sunshine, it displays the moon. I suppose that could be the sun with the moon traveling in front of it, as in an eclipse. Yes, that just means there is adequate sunshine, which makes sense, I guess. But yeah, this is a really nice display. I wonder if it's um, this visible with the sun on it. Actually, I've just lowered the blinds. I could put them back up and see whether it's visible. What you've got is uh, input charge current from the solar panel. Uh, also, it shows you the output current that the load is drawing and the battery voltage, and it's a 12 or 24 volt unit. 
there's some other stuff here. What's this? O C O H and error. Hmm. I have to read the manual even more. Right. This appears to be over current. When the load output overload or short circuit occurs, the controller will start the protect function automatically and turn off the load output. It displays O C and error. I don't seem to be able to find any reference to that O H overheat maybe. Uh, yes, it is, because in the table it's number seven. Warning, overheated protection. Let's get some sun on that display. So, uh, yeah, it is visible. The camera's showing it as flickery. It's not flickery. But, yeah, it is visible. I think with the sun blasting down onto it, it might be a bit shadowy. But, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, visible outdoors. Right, definitely need to have a look at what's inside here, because... Uh, one of the first things I want to find out is whether this is common positive or common negative. So let's have a look at the terminal connections on the back of the PCB. Uh, well, it looks quite nice inside. Uh, unfortunately, I can't immediately see whether it's uh, common pos or common neg because the heatsink is um, attached to the bottom of the PCB and you can see diodes and MOSFETs sandwiched in between the two layers there I and mean, I can probably bleep these out fairly quickly to determine that but uh, quite a nice layout in here microcontroller there uh, I'll get in close on that uh, that's an STC 15W40 sounds like oh no 15W404 AS I was going to say it sounds like engine oil but it doesn't now so that's fine now there are a number of little um, switch mode circuits here. There's an inductor here and a chip there. There's an inductor up here, a little chip sitting next to it. There's another little inductor down here with a little chip sitting next to it. I mean, maybe this is five volts for the microcontroller. This maybe is five volts for the um, USB possibly. Not sure what this one up here is. This 12 volt out, does it remain at 12 volts even if you're on a 24 volt pack? Who knows? Right, the uh, positives are on the left, so let's check that. Oh, that's interesting, no continuity there. Let's check the negs. Ah, that's interesting. This appears, let's just flip these round. This appears to be common negative which is unusual, they're normally common positive, but no, this one doesn't appear to be common positive. Well, that could be interesting. Now, there are four models, uh, the 2405, 2410, 15, and 2420, five amps, 10 amps, 15 amps, 20 amps, for charge and discharge, uh, respectively. This one appears to be the 20 amp model. Uh, that doesn't seem to be written anywhere on the unit, but it is here on the box there, current 20 amps. So I thought I'd just check um, the on and off switching of the output by just putting a bulb on there. So let's switch that on. Uh, the voltage has dropped down and that's reading 1.5 amps with the load switched on. And uh, the voltage has climbed back up with the load switched off. Yeah, I really like that current display. Well, I really like that display altogether, really. Uh, total USB output current is a very usable 3 amps, so presumably you can uh, draw that from one socket or split it across the two. But yeah, that's a lot better than these silly half amp ones. Now, the 12 volt DC output uh, I've got on the DVM, that appears to be switched. If I switch the output on uh, no current to the load, but uh, I've now got 12 volts on that output socket. It also appears to be regulated because that's very accurately 12 volts. And what's coming in is 13.6. So that's quite interesting to have an independent 12 volt output. What's the current on that, I wonder? Uh, DC output voltage, 12 volts, only CMG. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, there seem to be some CMG models and some CMF models. Not sure what CMF is. Uh, total DC output current, 2 amps via presumably the 12 volt outputs. Uh, lots more. 
well, 20 amps, yes, we, we saw that before. 20 amps on the load output, two amps it would appear on the 12 volt output. So this is the item on Banggood. It's a 20 amp, 12 volt, 24 volt auto switch LCD solar panel battery regulator charge controller. Um, this unit is $27.60. Now let's just see if there's any spec uh, further down. Uh, yeah, so 20 amps. Uh, says PWM charging mode, brackets SOC, state of charge. Not quite sure what they mean by that. Uh, various protections, overload, short circuit. Discharge 20 amps. Charge, rated discharge current and rated current discharge. They're both the same. Um, but you've got these independent um, 5 volt 3 amp and 12 volt 2 amp outputs. Uh, let's keep going down. I saw, oh yes, that's right. This do, it does have a sticker on the top of the unit, which tells you the current. So yeah, this has a sticker that tells you it's 20 amps. So yeah, to sum up, um, this is a, a 12, 24 volt solar charge controller. Useful particularly if you want the current measurements on both input and output, and you want switching on the positive side, high side switching. So all the negatives seem to be commoned up. And if you want a couple of um, switch mode power supplies for 5 volts and 12 volts, um, as well as your switched load output. And so these are today's post bag items. Cheerio!